In a genuinely hilarious scenario, which I would describe as the political equivalent of a man meeting his ex-wife's new boyfriend, Pierce Morgan interviewed Marjorie Taylor Greene. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, I've just got one clip to play, but it's about four minutes long. I assure you it's worth every second. It's hilarious. It's great. The entire interview is about 12 minutes long, and it's pretty contentious. It's pretty wild. I'll also point out before we play the clip, the wild predicate, the, the absurd predicate to the interview, because believe it or not, the reason, ostensibly, that Pierce Morgan is interviewing Marjorie Taylor Greene is because Marjorie Taylor Greene, and brace yourselves, she wrote a book. Allegedly. I mean, she held something up which vaguely looked like a book. It had a cover on it. It's called MTG. She didn't show us any pages, so they may be blank, or she may have written them in crayon. I, I have no idea. But she wrote a book. Marjorie Taylor Greene wrote a book. She'll probably burn it later on because that's just what she and her party do. But I digress. This is the exchange between Pierce Morgan and Marjorie Taylor Greene, and it's about democracy and January 6th, and it's just chef's kiss. You did suggest that people use violence to, to thwart democracy, didn't you? Not, well, you mean like in 1776 when we beat your country? Is that what you're talking about? If you want um, to no, reference... No, I didn't talk about violence on January 6th. If you want to reference 1776? What I did talk about is objecting, using my constitutional duty that I have well, let me as a play member you of what Congress you said. to object to fraudulent Marjorie, electoral college votes. Let me play you what, let me play you what you said. Absolutely, I did let that. Let me play you what you said. Let's, let's play what you said. Your own words. This is an important time in our history. We can't allow this just to just to be gone, you know, just to let it go. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants and allow him to become our president because he did not win this election. It's being stolen and the evidence is there. The so there can be no peaceful transfer of power. So what's the opposite of peace? That's why we objected, Piers. That's yeah, why that's we why, objected. And, and that's why, Marjorie, a gigantic um, mob that of... I have as a member of Congress. Okay, but let me make you know, my point. You know, there was a law firm that tried to take me off the ballot, and they were laughed out of the courtroom let in Georgia. Let me make my point. And you were giving their talking points. I can't tell you how much people in Georgia would think and Let this me give you my talking point, which is that a huge mob of people, many of whom were violent, crashed into the Capitol to try and thwart democracy. Wait, because, do you mean like... Because you people mean like, like you, Marjorie... You mean like the pro-Hamas rioters? People like you said two things. You mean like the pro-Hamas no, no, rioters? No, 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 I'm talking about January 6th. That came in and occupied our Marjorie, Capitol Marjorie, on uh, October 18th. Marjorie, that Rashida answer, Tlaib Marjorie, herself led. Marjorie, answer my question. No, wait, we're, we're in 2023, Piers. Marjorie, answer we my question. We just had a pro-Hamas mob You've written a book in which you talk about these the things. Okay. And Rashida Tlaib led Can I ask you a question? Can I? Let me sure, ask you the ahead. question. I want to ask well, two questions. One, presumably when you say there can be no peaceful transfer of power, you mean there has to be some violent objection to it, which is exactly what we then saw on January the 6th. I didn't say violence. You I didn't said say, we, you're there putting can be no peaceful mouth, transfer of power. I'm not going to let you do that. You said there no, can be no, Piers, I'm not going to let you... You're lying. I'm not put, letting right. you put words in People my mouth that your... I never said. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. You want to know where the real election interference right. happened? Let it me happened ask you. with Hillary Clinton, Marjorie, Barack Obama, and Russian collusion. I'm not talking about that. And I've America agreed with you went about that. Hell for four I've years agreed with you. That. I've agreed with you about Russian collusion. Let's agree about that. But let's not agree about the stolen election. I told Donald Trump to his face, and he didn't like it, called me a fool seven times, that the election was not stolen from him. He has singularly failed to produce any actual hard evidence that there was any stolen election. Do you still believe that election was stolen? Piers, you're not even a voter in our country. No? And I can tell you right now, as a Georgia resident and a member of Congress, in Georgia, our Secretary of State illegally changed the laws. So did Wisconsin, so did Pennsylvania, to allow our states to be flooded with absentee ballots. We have cases in court today. You should look them up. Fulton County case. Why have These are no cases judges that are about to be heard the in the was next stolen. few months, Piers. Excuse me. Marjorie, that we're it about wasn't to prove stolen. those cases. It wasn't Look, stolen. You can, you can think that all you want, but you live over in Britain. It's not just me I'm saying an American. It. I'm way, a Georgia voter. I'm a Marjorie, member of Congress. I've seen the evidence. Marjorie, Our election was Marjorie, stolen in 2020, talk. and we are going to re-elect President we'll Trump come in 2024. to what you're going to do, but just for the record, I do have a home in America, and I spend a lot of time in America, and I have lived and worked in America for 20 years. I love America. I love Americans. I particularly love your democratic system, and I don't like to see elected officials in America 
whether it's you or Donald Trump, pretending you had an election stolen when there is actually no evidence it was stolen. Well said, Pierce. I mean, again, that four minute exchange was just so rich with I mean, quite a bit. Number one, obviously the opening cheap shot she tried to take because she was upset. She, her snowflake feelings were so upset that she tried to hit him with a 250-year-old historic defeat. You know, well, like we did too in 1776 when we beat your country. When he was talking about overturning an election and challenging democracy. Well, when we challenged the crown in 1776, we weren't challenging democracy. We were challenging a monarchy. That was the entire point, number one. Number two, Note the sleight of hand that she did. She randomly, apropos of nothing, I mean, had nothing to do with what he was talking about, brought up how there was an attempt to get her kicked off the ballot. She said it was laughed out of court, implying that because something is laughed out of court, you know, it's some sort of win. Well, then by la that logic, later on when Pierce Morgan points out that every lawsuit that Trump and Green and MAGA and Republicans brought to try to challenge the results of President Biden's victory, those were also laughed out of courts. 60 court cases, as a matter of fact, very often adjudicated or presided over by conservative judges. So if you or if somebody losing a court case and it being laughed out of court is humiliating, what do 60 court cases being laughed out of court, what's that mean? And then I, 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 it's, well, the other thing is I had forgotten about that clip that Marjorie Taylor Greene made in the, you know, before January 6th, you know. The thing about MAGA and the thing about Trump and the thing about the current iteration of the Republican Party, it's so easy to forget the crazy things they've said and done because there are always two or three more crazy things waiting in the queue, and you only have so much bandwidth to try to process this stuff. I'd completely forgotten about that, but her words are pretty clear. She says that we can't have a peaceful transfer of power by definition inherently and unambiguously. That means she was advocating for the opposite of a peaceful transfer of power. And note she lies shamelessly because she's a coward. She was like, no, no, no. What I meant was I wanted to use my privilege as a member of Congress to object to the certification of Joe Biden's victory. Well, you can do that. You probably shouldn't do that, right? It's extremely pathetic, but you can do that. You did do that, and it didn't have to be violent. That, so that, that, that makes no sense. There's a disconnect. You can still support a peaceful transfer of power and object to the certification of the 2020 election. These two things are not mutually exclusive. The only things that are mutually exclusive are supporting a peaceful transfer of power and opposing a peaceful transfer of power, which is, which is what she's doing. The, the, the objection certification or the, cert, the objection to the certification is, is a red herring. She was clearly advocating for violence to try to stop by any means necessary the peaceful transfer of power, um, which would occur – I mean, technically, it would begin on January 6th with the certification of the results and then ultimately conclude on January like 21st, 2021. So he had her there. I mean, she's just absolutely outmatched by her own deceit and ignorance and stupidity. But apparently she wrote a book. So I don't know. You let me know what you think in the comments. I definitely recommend that you check out the entire interview. Again, it's about 12 minutes long. Let me know what you think in the comments. You tell me how you think Marjorie Taylor Greene did.